The new Talangi led government has made changes to their portfolio distribution, with Honourable Premier retaining a majority of the responsibilities. As it stands as present, two new roles are also established for assistant ministers. The distribution of portfolios has Honourable Tokita Langi as the Chairman of Cabinet. He retains the Premier's Department, Finance, Customs and Revenue and Government Assets, Taxation, Infrastructure Department, Transport, the New Public Service Commission, po Police and National Security, Immigration and Population, Civil Aviation, New Tourism, New Post and Telecommunication and ITC, and the New Development Bank. Honorable Pokoto Sipili, Sipili takes on Education Department, the Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, as well as the Administrative Services and NTDC. Honorable Halene Mangatungia, he has the Public Works Department, the New Power Corporation, Justice Lands and Survey, and Bulk Fuel. Honourable Joan Vidyamu holds the portfolios for Health Department, Community Affairs and the New Broadcasting Corporation. The two new roles established two assistant ministers, Honourable Billy Talangi, responsible for Premier Talangi's portfolios of Taonganiwe, Niwe, Religion and Environment. Honourable Dalton Tangelangi is also responsible for Premier Talangi's portfolios of Youth and Sports Developments the Met Services and Climate Change. The first introduction to Premier Talangi's new government operations to the House of Assembly will be heard tomorrow in the second sitting of the new Legislative Assembly. Both ministers will also be involved with projects and NZ aid maintenance programs. The new government and ministers will advise the new Legislative Assembly during the second meeting of the House tomorrow morning. Last week, we broadcast a news item regarding New Zealand and new government's development initiatives for the island, starting with the Matawai Resort, the Tourism Office, as well as Anaiki Motel, and the court injunction placed on Anaiki by the New Development Bank. Concerns from the New Development Bank of New Zealand High Commissioner His Excellency Mr. Mark Blomsky's remarks on New TV prompted the bank to respond, in which they released a statement to BCN News. It says, It has always been NDB's desire to see this property restored for the benefit of Niwe. However, in its prudent management of NDB assets and recognising statutory requirements, NDB has continually insisted that an agreeable lease is signed before any development commences. The Trust did not at any time work together with NDB on any plans or designs for the Anaiki Motel. The NDB never indicated to the Trust that it would give them Anaiki and was surprised when it purchased materials, assuming the NDB would ignore its statutory duty and obligations to the mortgagee. The bank was not consulted about the developments and it was told by the Trust that it was going to happen Regardless of the bank's views, the NDB sought independent legal advice and acted on that advice. The bank also said a deal was proposed to the Trust for consideration of Anaiki but was declined, in which they also proposed a counter-offer and was also declined. According to NDB, it was not offered any money by the Trust for Anaiki. The response by the Trust in the news coverage that the property has no value, said the bank, must have prompted the trust to act accordingly. In its stance, NDB said they have a statutory duty to obtain the highest price possible for its asset and has taken steps to obtain its interest. The property, according to the press release, is now on tendered on the market and will consider offers from any interested parties, including the Trust. Today, community groups received tips on proposal writing and implementation of activities with funds sourced from the Secretary of the Pacific Community. The Public Health, HIV and STI Division have received a number of interests from the communities of last year. 
And according to Manila Norsa, the amount of funds available each year from SBC to MUE, specifically for projects targeting HIV and STIs, is 10,000 Australian dollars. So over a period of three years, MUE is entitled to 30,000 Australian dollars. Six groups have been selected to implement projects utilising these funds this year and activities vary, but the main focus is on HIV and STI awareness and prevention. We would like to show them and to encourage them how to use the funds properly. We understand we have some um, experience in the past with some of the groups, with um, especially the financial reporting and the way how they use the funds because sometimes when they ask for the funds to be used on what they would like to use and then they go out there and use on something else so that's what we are trying to avoid so these groups will understand properly their responsibility and their obligations under the arrangements that we have organized with them today so hopefully as they go out there and implement the activities they should be able to use the funds wisely and report wisely and be accountable to what they do because at the end of the day they need to report back on how they use the funds. There's a variety of activities they would like to implement in the next six months ranging from uh, a group who want to do a billboard in one village to promote HIV and AIDS and there are groups who also want to do health education especially for, um, for young people, the youth, uh, groups like the Boys and the Girls Brigade they would like to do something similar like that to teach the young people about um, HIV and STI. So we are hoping that these groups will be able to do these activities in the next six months. With the specialised training held today, community groups will be able to implement activities with ease and avoid some of the challenges experienced by other recipients in the past. There also is a need for proper financial reporting systems and acquittals within groups. The message from the department is to spend wisely and to be accountable to ensure that projects are imp implemented with maximum returns. Last Friday, the new Environment Department was buzzing as the office opened their doors to the public in an open day, showcased to celebrate World Environment Day celebrated on the 5th of June each year. Displays were set up for members of the public to observe some of the work the department is involved in and the importance of forests not only for gathering sustenance but also the influence forests have on climate change and water resources. This year's theme, Forest, Nature at Your Service, highlighted the special importance given to forests. The department has developed legislation and policies but in order for the principles to be used or applied in the community, the people need to be aware of their roles and responsibilities working in partnership with the Environment Department. Director of Environment Sawini Tangatuli says that the department is developing programs to raise awareness amongst the community on the vital role we play in maintaining forests, but on top of that, this year is also the year of the forests. And it was Hakupu's day to shine last Saturday as the community came together to share in the annual village show day. Stores were plentiful and residents were hard to miss in a sea of pink, which apparently represents the old school colours of the Tuasia Side School. The day was formally opened with the raising of the village flag. This was followed by the village song and speeches from representatives of the different community groups within the village. This year also saw an increase in numbers of people arriving from New Zealand, especially for the show day joining in the community spirit. What was also evident was the lack of food crops on show, but was due to but that was due to being overlooked on the bulldozing schedule due to machinery breakdowns. However, what was lacking in numbers was made up for with quality. Some people were in awe of what could have been a record breaking bunch of bananas. With the formalities out of the way, it was time to celebrate and Hakupu catered for all age groups, starting with a baby show. Kitty's bike race, an open talent quest with Hakupu's Got Talent, which proved entertaining with a few surprises. A special appearance from Anaola Paya, a young Nguyen from New Zealand, made her presence felt through her passion for dance, keen to share her love for performing with her people. 
if future if Niue's future could be judged by the vibrancy of its communities, judging by Hakupu's show day, there is a bright future ahead. Now those are our news stories for this evening. We do hope you can join us for our next news bulletin. Don't forget to tune in to Radio Sunshine tomorrow for the second New Legislative Assembly meeting.